Hello and welcome to the installation video of our Datsun 510 steering rack conversion. Uh, this is probably one of the most anticipated products for the 510 that we've had in quite some time. Uh, so we're gonna do a thorough job of this installation video. Hopefully you already watched the product over video and got yourself accustomed. Um, in this video, you can obviously have the uh, steering rack cross member, a pair of the upper and lower rack clamps, the shaft for the steering column conversion, with the bearing, snap rings and assembled, the aluminum clamp collar, pair of the tie rods with the bung adjuster nut to make uh, toe adjustment super easy, the uh, double U-joint, single U-joint, a three quarter inch double D shaft, a rod end, now this usually comes assembled onto the cross member from us, a pair of the uh, tie rods, whether it's low profile or adjustable, whichever one you selected, uh, then for the hardware sheet, you're gonna have a hardware sheet. It's gonna come with six of the half inch bolts, six nuts, uh, 12 washers, four smaller nuts, four smaller washers, and a pair of these U bolts. Now, we already covered this in the product overview of the steering rack. It's optional to buy it from us. We certainly can. Uh, otherwise, you can buy it from the manufacturer themselves. We'll have a link in the on our website. The uh steering rack bushings would come with it as well make sure you order that if you do buy it yourself to order it with the steering rack bushings um besides that uh there's really not a whole lot i mean we already discussed this fits a right hand drive and left hand drive um whether you have a factory l series engine there's that mid pipe that has to get uh modified or custom made that's covered in our product overview video um, otherwise, SR20, K swaps, this, this obviously goes a lot easier. I guess without further much ado, we can start pre-assembling this. Uh, we'll do this in a few stages. We'll start pre-assembling some of the components to each other, just to kind of make it a little easier to do it uh, here rather than on the car itself. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pre-assemble the steering rack to our cross member. We're gonna take the rack clamps off. We'll install the steering rack through one side here. All right. And then we have two styles of rack clamps. You can see here, one with the bigger D, one with the smaller D to get installed. I'll raise the steering rack up a little bit. And these uh, clamps really provide a nice tight tight fit. So with, in conjunction with the poly bushings, it'll hopefully sharpen up a lot of that steering. All right. Next, you're going to take the U-joints. And push them through. So then we have our U-joints uh, attached. We can go carefully flip it on the other side. Sometimes they might fall out uh, and grab the washers and the four nuts. And I'll go ahead and get these started. And then I'll flip it upside down so it doesn't fall out. All right, so once you got a hand tight, I'm just gonna flip it over so you guys can see it from the bottom. We'll go ahead. And uh, I'm not tightening it all the way. I'm trying to work in a, an alternating pattern. All right, so once you went ahead and got that assembled, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the rod end to the steering rack bracket, or this guy to this, the rod end to the cross member. I'm not gonna make it tight, just enough to hold it, kind of like so. And then the tie rod ends to the tie rod ends on the steering rack. All right, and then finally, we'll just do our tie rod studs super quick. We're gonna just add, keep the two bump steer shims and the rod end spacer in that same orientation. And we'll just snug that down um, just to have that in position there. All right, and then finally, the last bit of uh, pre-assembly is going to be the U-joints. And now this U-joint is going to go onto the steering rack. It's a single U-joint. And you'll notice there's a notch and a set screw. You're gonna to wanna to make sure those are lined up. All right, 
So here, I got the Allen key here, and I'm just gonna try to line it up where that notch is. So there, I got it just put in there. I didn't tighten anything down. The second step is going to be installing the three quarter inch double D into the shaft as well. Usually, I try to make it flush to the bottom of that, and we're just gonna lightly tighten this up. Uh, this is uh, designed to be adjusted once it's on the car. But here you can see pretty good representation of how the steering rack will function. And then the last part is obviously gonna be on the car, but here you can see where this uh, double shaft would go. This would go into your steering column. And so you're all the way out here and you're turning your wheel. That's kind of cool. All right, let's get to the uh, car and get it installed. All right, so after you remove the steering box, the idler arm, the center link, and all of the factory steering components, you'll have access uh, to that steering column. Then now you're gonna pull out the factory U-joint. You're gonna make a cut. What I found was easiest is actually if you take a sawzall and have the sawzall blade just cut. You're just pretty much trying to split it in half. Maybe about an inch down is where you wanna go between the front to the back about an inch of a difference. And that's where we're gonna have this collar put in. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go with the supplied uh, spline shaft. Now I'm gonna wanna make sure that that spline engages. All right, I see that just got it engaged. So now here we go, we have the spline shaft. You can see it turning really nice and freely in there. I'm gonna place, then we're gonna have this clamp. We're gonna place it right where that bearing is. Now visually I can see that. Oh, just like that. And try to align the slots in the clamp with the slots that you already have cut into it. Get that clamp right there. All right, and now we have a nice tight, tight steering shaft. It doesn't move, but it spins nice and freely. I don't know if you can see this, but as I turn this guy, it turns nice and smooth inside, also turning the steering wheel. So next, we're gonna go ahead and install that secondary cross member. It's usually easier to have another person help you out with this, but then you're gonna take your bolts and washers that are supplied, slide them through the other side. Do that to all three on each side and then follow them up by the nut and the washer. Do not fully torque them, but get them semi-tight. We'll apply the torque specs later. Next is going to be the double U-joint. We have obviously a splined uh, one and then the three-quarter DD. The splined one will go into the spline shaft. Now the set screw should be aligned with the flat on the spline shaft. So we're gonna carefully do that. I'm gonna try to see if I can sneak it around so it's out of the view of the camera. All right, just like that, that's not bad. All right, and our splines are pretty tight. Uh, just to reduce any slop, so we do recommend using a mallet. Now I can see it. So once you have that aligned, you can start tightening up that set screw. Alrighty. Next, it's going to be this rod end that supports the shaft. Now, what I like to do is I like to completely disassemble that shaft collar. So what I did is I disassembled the rod end, and now what I'll do is carefully try to sneak in the double D shaft. Ugh. You might have to loosen the set screw on the first. Once you have that put in, and we'll go ahead and reinstall the rod end. Okay, so next, now that we have the support rod in there, uh, you'll notice that we still have to tighten up the shaft. It kind of slides between the both of them. You want to pretty much split the difference. We do give a little bit extra length, but you want to make sure that you have ample engagement on both sides. So from what I can visually see here, 
Bar right there looks good. Once you have all the U-joint assembly semi-tightened down, then you can go ahead and assemble the tie rods onto the knuckle. So here we're just gonna remove the washer. Alrighty, put the washer back on top, followed by the nut. And now we have two bump steer spacers in here. Uh, that will be once you figure out your geometry, what you want is your tie rod and your control arm to be as parallel as possible. So another, the nice thing about our pivot point on our steering rack, it's very close to the control arms pivot point. So geometry is pretty optimal with that. But depending on bump steer, you can choose this. And if you obviously have the low profile, you don't get that luxury of having the bump steer adjustment, but it does clear the smaller 15 inches and smaller wheels. So you can go ahead and do that to the other side. Then once you're done, we're gonna go back and start torquing out everything. So then you can go ahead and start tightening this guy. Again, just hand tighten it. So now you have your beautiful steering rack conversion uh, installed. Well, let's go over torque specs. You're gonna torque these bottom U-bolts to 15 to 20 foot-pounds. The goal is to make sure that there's no gap in the clamps on this one. You wanna make sure they're nice and tight. Then you're gonna go ahead and torque. These are gonna be found on our tie rod instruction video. So you'll see the instruction for the upper and the lower on the tie rod instruction videos. You can go ahead and torque the jam nut here to pretty much make it tight. That might be equivalent of five to 10 foot pounds, but pretty much you just don't want it to spin at all. That's your end goal. You're gonna torque the bolts that go through the frame to mount to here to 15 to 20 foot pounds as well. Same thing with the jam nut back here. You're gonna to wanna to do about 15 to 20 foot pounds back here. Now, all of the steering linkage system ones, you're gonna to wanna to just torque those until they're nice and tight, making sure that you uh, fully engage on the spline and then tighten where the shaft is either flattened out or where they're designed to be tightened. We do recommend adding a little bit of Loctite onto the threads prior to fully tightening it. That way they stay tight, especially through vibrations and stuff like that. You're gonna wanna have these just fully tightened. Uh, we don't really know a torque spec. I'd estimate anywhere between five and 10 foot pounds. You're gonna want to torque the clamp down kind of the same fashion, pretty much make it so there's no gap or visible gap to make it sure it's fully engaged in that fairing. Now this is aluminum, so you never wanna to torque it too much because you can always risk stripping that out. So we would just torque those until there's no gap and then that steering shaft is nice and snug inside of there. That is pretty much about it for this full installation video. It's, as you can see, got ample clearance for the oil ports. You know, here we did mention that already. This is where the exhaust outlet is. That's why a new header would be recommended. You have tons of space behind here to be able to reroute a header. It's just this factory cast iron one it does make it difficult. You could possibly do a U and go around back, but we do recommend either having a custom one of that made or some sort of modified header for that. That pretty much sums us up. We're gonna go ahead and turn the steering wheel to see it in action.